Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Adara Europis Synagogue. Here was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. The black presence in the lands of the Bible, page 15. Welcome to Universal Center for Renovation, UNCR. In this episode, we will investigate the gods of the ancient world. Are the gods of the ancient world cultures actually false gods? Is there a creator God above these gods that the ancient cultures and nations worshipped? Come with us. Let us explore these ideas. All the nations of antiquity worship the planets and they gave them names and attributes that represented something in their culture, some special quality that meant something to them. The goddess Venus was the planet Venus. The moon was the god Nana. The planet Mercury was the god Enki. The sun was the god Surya. The planet Mars was the god Horus. The planet Saturn was the god Neurta. The planet Jupiter was the god Zeus. Here we have a statue of Grimaldi man of Italy, a Paleolithic man or Stone Age man of Europe, who, according to anthropologists, lived 20,000 years ago. If our research is correct at Universal Center for Renovation, Paleolithic man isn't that old. And he goes back to the son of Japheth, who was the son of the biblical Noah. And we can prove that through history and archaeology and anthropology. In his hand is a Venus figurine. Venus figurines symbolize the planet Venus, who the Grimaldi man of Italy worshipped as a goddess. The religion of the ancient people of Europe, the Near East, including North Africa, was astrotheology, astro mysticism, astral religion, astral or stellar theology, also referred to as astral or star worship. It is the worship of the stars individually or together as the night sky, the planets, and other heavenly bodies, as deities or the association of deities with 
heavenly bodies. In the land of Canaan, it was called Baal worship. The Grimaldi man of Europe, Italy, and France represent the Aboriginal and native nations of that continent, Europe. Biblically called the children of Japheth, the son of Noah, their skeletal remains can be found from Britain, France, Italy, Russia, to the South Pacific. Anthropologist Thomas Huxley named the Papuans of New Guinea and the Melanesians as their direct descendants. Pressure from migrating Shemites from the Near East, environmental changes, and the disruption in trade networks caused a mass migration of the children of Japheth out of Europe into regions of the Far East. The Grimaldi man is holding a Venus figurine or idol in his hand. Venus figurine, Venus of Willendorf. The Queen of Heaven. This Venus idol represents the planet Venus and Earth, the Earth Mother and the Heavenly Mother or Sky Mother. As Earth Mother, she personified deification of motherhood, fertility, creation, destruction, or the Earth Goddess who embodies the bounty of the earth or nature. Her Venus symbolism includes love, beauty, desire, sex, fertility, prosperity, and victory. Names include En Anna, Anat, Isis, Nut, Astarte, Asherah, and Venus. In this picture, we have a humanized reconstruction of the Venus figurine. Archaeologists figured out that some of the world's oldest cave drawings don't just depict animals. They're constellations of stars. Deep within the earth in caves, the sons of Japheth painted star maps that helped them keep track of the seasonal migrations of animals they hunted. Secret occult or magic rituals was also conducted. It was believed a successful hunt could not be achieved without the aid of the planetary gods. Researchers have discovered that ancient cave paintings in Europe depict star constellations and were used 
to keep track of astronomical events. France, Lascaux Cave Paintings, France, biblically called Gomer, after a son of Japheth, who was the son of Noah, who survived the global flood. Gomer's children became a nation who inherited France. These cave paintings served more than one purpose. The first, the hunters used visualization techniques or sympathetic magic to ensure their hunts were successful. Two, they charted the seasonal migrations of the animals they wanted to hunt. So these paintings served as calendars. Three, and they use the paintings to mark celestial events and phenomena to predict environmental changes, seasonal changes, bad weather, floods, and so forth. The Lascaux Caves contain an image of a long horned bull with six dots over its back. And anyone interested in astrology or astronomy will immediately recognize this symbolism as this just has to be an image of Taurus with the six stars of the Pleiades over its back. Taurus, Latin for the bull, is one of the constellations of the zodiac and is located in the northern celestial hemisphere. Taurus is a large and prominent constellation in the northern hemispheres, winter sky. It is one of the oldest constellations, dating back to the early Bronze Age, at least, when it marked the location of the sun during the spring equinox. Its importance to the agricultural calendar influenced various bull figures in the mythologies of ancient Sumer, Akkad, Assyria, Babylon, Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Its old astronomical symbol is a bullhorn which resemble a bull's head. The Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, Messier 45, and other names by different cultures, is an asterism and an open star cluster containing middle age hot B type stars in the northwest of the constellation. Taurus. The ancient Egyptians used the names Followers and Ennead. The cave paintings superimposed on a modern star map.
the cave paintings were star maps. Ancient star chart. On the left, on the right, modern star chart. In the book of Job, a part of the collection of books written by the Israelites, the constellations and the stars were created by the Most High God and are under His control. Of the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 7 through 9. If he commands it, the sun won't rise, and the stars won't shine. He alone has spread out the heavens and marches on the waves of the sea. He made all the stars, the bear, and Orion, the Pleiades, and the constellations of the southern sky. NLT version. Names of the planets. In the beginning, most ancient cultures recognized seven planets consisting of sun and moon in the five planets visible in the sky. The Latin names of the planets were simple translations of the Greek names, which in turn were translations of the Babylonian names, which go back to the Sumerians, the ancient planets. English, Moon, Sumerian, Nan, Mercury, Sumerian, Inki. If you go to the Sanskrit, you see the word Buddha, which means the enlightened one. But Buddha was the planet Mercury, Venus in Latin. Venus, the planet Venus. Sun in Sanskrit, Surya. Mars in Egyptian, Haru Jeshet. English, Jupiter. Greek, Zeus. English, Saturn, Sumerian, Nuerta. The seven planets or the seven gods of the ancient world. The ancient nations worship the stars and the planets, but the most high God has absolute control over nature, including the planets and the stars. The book of Job, Chapter 38, verse 31 to 33. Can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons? Or lead out the bear with its clubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens, the laws of physics that govern time and space, nature in the broadest sense is the physical world or universe, 
nature can refer to the phenomena of the physical world and also to life in general. The study of nature is a large, if not the only part of science. The word nature is borrowed from the old French nature and is derived from the Latin word natura or essential qualities, innate disposition, and in ancient times literally meant birth. In ancient philosophy, natura is mostly used as the Latin translation of the Greek word physicist. Nature means physics. During the advent of modern scientific method in the last several centuries, nature became the passive reality, organized and moved by divine laws. With the Industrial Revolution, nature increasingly became seen as the part of reality deprived from intentional intervention. Industrial Revolution, 1760 to 1840. Physis is a Greek philosophical, theological, and scientific term, usually translated into English according to its Latin translation, natura, as nature. The term originated in ancient Greek philosophy and was later used in Christian theology and Western philosophy. Since Aristotle, the physical, the subject matter of physics, properly natural things, has been just opposed to the metaphysical. Physics means nature. Nature worship also called naturalism, is any of a variety of religious, spiritual, and devotional practices that focus on the worship of the nature spirits, considered to be behind the natural phenomena visible throughout nature. A nature deity can be in charge of nature, a place, a biotope, the biosphere, the cosmos, or the universe. Nature worship is often considered the primitive source of modern religious beliefs and can be found in pantheism and paganism. The worship of physics, nature worship, pantheism, Pantheism is the philosophical religious belief that reality, the universe, and the cosmos are identical to divinity and a supreme being or entity. The physical universe is thus understood as an imminent creator, deity still expanding and creating, which has existed since the beginning of time. The term pantheist designates one who holds both that everything constitutes a unity and that this unity is divine, consisting of an all-encompassing manifested God or goddesses. All astronomical objects are thence viewed as part of a soul deity. Astronomical objects, planets, 
and stars equal gods. The Helix Nebula, commonly named the Eye of God, Etymology, pantheism, derives from the Greek word pan, meaning all of everything, and deos, meaning God, divine. Definitions. There are numerous definitions of pantheism. Some consider it a theological and philosophical position concerning God, a doctrine which identifies God with the universe or regards the universe as a manifestation of God. Pan, God, with a small g, in ancient Greek religion, and mythology, Pan is the god of the wild shepherds and flocks, rustic music and impromptus, and companion of the nymphs. He has the hind quarter legs and horns of a goat, in the same manner as the fawn or satyrs. With his homeland in rustic Arcadia, he is also recognized as the god of the fields, groves, wooded glens, and often affiliated with sex because of this. Pan is connected to fertility and the season of spring. Pantheism, Greek, pan, meaning all of everything, and theos meaning God, divine. Identification with Satan. Pan's goatish image recalls conventional fawn-like depictions of Satan. Pan and Greek mythology a fertility deity, more or less bestial in form. He was associated by the Romans with Faunus, originally an Arcadian deity. His name is a Doric contraction of Paeon, pasturer, but was commonly supposed in antiquity to be connected with Pan, all. Francisco Goya, painting of The Witch's Sabbath, 1798. Pan identification with Satan, fawn like depictions of Satan. Pan, identity with fawns and satyrs of Roman and Greek mythology. Fawn, the fawn, is a half-human and half-goat mythological creature appearing in Greek and Roman mythology. Originally, fawns of Roman mythology were spirits, genie, of rustic places, lesser versions of their chief, the god Faunus, before their conflictation with the Greek satyrs, fawn.
equal satyrs. Satyr. In Greek mythology, a satyr is a male nature spirit. They were companions of the god Dionysus and were believed to inhabit remote locales such as woodlands, mountains, and pastures. Nature spirit equal nature worship. In terminology, the etymology of the term satyr is unclear. And several different etymologies have been proposed for it. Eric Partridge suggested that the name may be related to the root sat, meaning to sow, which has also been proposed as the root of the name of the Roman god Saturn, Satyrs, the planet Saturn as a god, Satyrs, origin hypothesis from the Near Eastern cultures. On the other hand, a number of commentators have noted that satyrs are also similar to beings in the belief of ancient Near Eastern cultures. Various demons of the desert are mentioned in ancient Near Eastern texts. Beings possibly similar to satyrs called serum are mentioned several times in the Hebrew Bible. Seir was the standard Hebrew word for he goat, but it could also apparently sometimes refer to demons in the forms of goats. They were evidently subjects of veneration because Leviticus chapter 17 verse 7 forbids Israelites from making sacrifices and offerings to them. In 2 Chronicles chapter 11, verse 15, mentions that a special cult was established for the serum of Jeroboam. Like satyrs, they were associated with desolate places and with some variety of dancing. Serum were understood by at least some ancient commentators to be goat-like demons of the wilderness. Satyrs, Hebrew, Serum, also a demon-like creature. Serum Singular, Seer, or a demon, Seer was the ordinary Hebrew word for he goat. Sirim are frequently compared with the Shittim of Hebrew tradition, along with satyrs of Greek mythology, fauns of Roman mythology. Abraham Ibn Ezra, 1089 to 1092. Born around that time, January 27th. Died January 28th, 1164 or 1167. Writes in his commentary that the serum are a form of spirits, shedum, seen by crazy people. People stray away from God by believing in them, for seeking them out implies a belief in another force besides God who can make things go good or bad. It is not clear from Ibn Ezra if he considers Serum to be merely delusions or real, but can only be seen by crazy people in the form of he-goats who falsely attribute power Independent from God to them. Delusions, hallucinations, the satyrs or demons appeared during times of reverie, noisy 
festivals, especially when these involved drinking a large amount of alcohol, sex, and psychoactive substances, drugs. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 7 may shed some more light on these satyrs or fawns or demon-like creatures or spirits. KJ 21 And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. ASV And they shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices unto the he goats after which they play the harlot. This shall be a statute for ever unto them throughout their generations. AMP So they shall no longer offer their sacrifices to goat idols or demon or filled spirits with which they have played the prostitute. This should be a permanent statue for them throughout their generations. AMPC So they shall no more offer their sacrifices to goat-like gods or demons or filled spirits after which they have played the harlot. This should be a statue forever to them throughout their generations. BRG And they shall no more Offer their sacrifices unto devils, after whom they have gone a whoring. This shall be a statue forever unto them throughout their generations. CSB They must no longer offer their sacrifices to the goat demons that they have prostituted themselves with. This will be a permanent statue for them throughout their generations. CEB the Israelites must no longer sacrifice their communal sacrifices to the goat demons that they follow so faithlessly. This will be a permanent rule for them throughout their future generation. DRA and they shall no more sacrifice their victims to devils with whom they have committed fornication. This shall be an ordinance forever to them and to their posterity. ERV In this way, you will stop being unfaithful to me by offering sacrifices to your goat gods. This law will continue forever. EHV so that they no longer offer their sacrifices to the goat demons to which they have been prostituting themselves. This shall be a permanent regulation for them throughout their generations. ESV So they shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices to goat demons at the whom they whore. This shall be a statue forever for them throughout their generations. ESVUK So they shall no more sacrifice their sacrifices to goat demons after whom they whore. This shall be a statue forever for them throughout their generations. EXB They must not offer any more sacrifices to their goat idols. Goat images representing demons, which they have chased like prostitutes. Spiritual infidelity is often likened to marital infidelity. These rules, statutes, ordinance, requirements will continue for people from now on throughout their generations. MSG, God spoke to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and all the Israelites Tell them, this is what God commands. Any and every man who slaughters an ox or lamb or goat inside or outside the camp, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tent of meeting, 
to offer it to God in front of the dwelling of God. That man is considered guilty of bloodshed. He has shed blood and must be cut off from his people. This is so the Israelites will bring to God the sacrifices that they are in the habit of sacrificing out in the open fields. They must bring them to God and the priests at the entrance to the tent of meeting and sacrifice them as peace offerings to God. The priests will splash the blood on the altar of God at the entrance to the tent of meeting and burn the fat as a pleasing fragrance to God. They must no longer offer their sacrifices to goat demons, a kind of religious orgy. This is a perpetual decree down through the generations. These activities were attracting unclean spirits and spirit possession. When people are told by the priests of these philosophies, self-empowerment and enhancement are the end results of these rituals. The truth is far more insidious. A change does take place, a transformation, a life-altering experience, and a mind-altering incident does occur, but not for the better. Legion, demons. Legion means a large group, or in another parlance, it may mean many. In the Bible, it was used to refer to the group of demons, particularly those in two or three versions of the exorcism of the Gerasene, demoniac. An account in the New Testament of an incident in which Jesus performs an exorcism. In the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. Return of an unclean spirit. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places, seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. So also will it be with this evil generation. The nations believed possession by the gods, planets, were a beneficial thing in their religious cultures. But with the Israelites, it will bring on the curses of the book of Deuteronomy. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 9 These ancient gods or planets These planets are the ancient seven sacred planets Saturn Jupiter Mars the sun Venus Mercury and the moon And to the nations of antiquity or the ancient nations, they considered or thought to be possessed by these seven 
planetary spirits or seven gods was to bring on enlightenment, illumination. But to the Israelites, this will bring on madness, destruction, and curses.